All right, guys. Um, I've had a couple people ask me about doing a, <clears throat> excuse me, a review on the RC Run 80, <clears throat> even though it's an LC80, Land Cruiser 80, Toyota. So I figured I'd just kind of give you guys my brief overview of the build, um, any problems you might run into, anything that might be, excuse me, um, unforeseeable until you get the truck and start assembling it. I ran into a couple of simple problems and those initiated from when I was building the axles, uh, stabilizer bar maybe, uh, that runs to your axle, but they don't show you to assemble it in the, uh, in the instructions. So it's kind of interesting. You're, you're left with a piece and you're like, how do I put this on there? And this is all how the truck came stock. Um, I haven't changed any of the drive components other than I did put some Vanquish incision drive shafts on it just because I don't like the ones that come with it have a little spring that goes around the pin and I'm not a fan of that because that spring when you're out trailing usually it'll unwind or it'll it'll just get snagged on something and that pin will fall out and you'll lose it. Um, it was awesome to build. It was, I mean everyone that kind of came in and uh, put their hands on it as I was building, couldn't believe how heavy it is. I mean, just this motor itself, the block, is super heavy. So your engine obviously goes inside of this block and you get the motor trim stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, what I went with for electronics for this, because I didn't want to have an external ESC outside of, uh, or in my engine compartment, because obviously there's nowhere to put it underneath this chassis, um, because your body kind of slides on here via these front pegs and then the I'm sorry rear pegs and then the front um, frame rails end in the chassis which I'm assuming because they have there's a mount right here like you'd set, set this chassis on and then there's one back here so I was assuming potentially at some point there would be a front fender inner fender kit because you've got a rear inner fender kit obviously once the body's on uh, my interior is what I did was I drilled a little hole here and I ran all my wiring in through here so my receivers behind the dash I'm gonna eventually waterproof that for right now it's, I'm just running a two channel I'm running a reefs triple five servo um, and my goal is to eventually run a um, a servo winch in here somewhere I might have to put it in the bed um, and then run it out through maybe down through the chassis and out through the front just because I think it'd be kind of cool to have a servo winch on here. Um, I'm not sure about the space I have here, but I don't think there's enough to even use a smaller servo winch up front, like even a micro, maybe. Um, but it would require some mounts and potentially ditching the fake radiator on here. So motor-wise, um, I ran the new Fusion 2300 KV Hobbywing 2-in-1. Um, I felt like that was going to be the best fit for this setup and the cleanest look. Putting the motor in here was interesting. It, it wasn't really difficult. I did have to trim down the little rubber where the wires come out a little bit because otherwise it would have um, pressed the case or kept the cases from the two halves of the motor from pressing together. Um, I ordered the there's a set of hardened gears you can get for this that I um, ordered and when I was ordering them and installing them I got into the motor itself and took it apart to uh, change out the gears because I assumed the ones that were in there were going to be cast. No, they were already the hardened but gears. I so did I buy the hardened front and rear gears, <clears throat> excuse me, but the gears that come in this are helical cut. Um, because I've seen some guys on the Facebook group say that they've had issue with the gears, you know, breaking or chipping teeth. Maybe they're a cast gear, I don't know. Um, but then the hardened gears are a straight cut gear. So they're not beveled or a pineapple cut or whatever they call it, spiral cut. Um, if I break them, then I will put the hardened gears in here. If you go on Asia T's website, they will be able to just type in RC Run or LC80 <clears throat> and all that stuff should come up potentially. It won't take too much hunting to find that. Um, I went with a set of beadlock wheels that are basically knockoff OMFs from Vanquish. 
Um, I just like the wheels. They're cheap. They look really good on the truck. Um, so, and then I went with class one tusks because uh, I have an indoor crawl, of course, here, as you can tell from the dust on the tires, and they seem to hook up really good. I did go with an, uh, a Vanquish servo horn as well, um, just because it, it tucked in there really nice. The, the one they give you with the kit is okay. Um, I feel like it steps up too high because I ended up putting my bar on top of my servo or even with my servo, um, just so it was put where it is, um, as you can tell. Um, so, and I didn't want to have it down here where it'd be hitting on stuff. So right now it won't, if it comes in contact with anything, the axle in this uh, drag link or steering link will come in contact with something first before this does. Um, as I do with all my trucks, I kits rather, um, this came with an assembled engine, transmission, trans transmission transfer case all in one. Um, I take everything apart and I'll go through and I'll do a marine grade grease, heavy duty grease. I did the same thing with the axles. As I was in inspecting the um, the diff gears in the front and rear axle, I took those apart and I pretty much put a bunch of grease in there. There was some grease in each one, so that was nice, um, but I kind of overdid it um, just because I want to A, take away some of the noise from the transmission because of the gears and a planetary setup, and B, um, it just, it, now I know it's done. I don't have to go back through and do it. It did have some metal shielded bearings that I swapped out for some rubber sealed bearings. Not a real big deal. Um, just something if you're gonna be running in water to keep an eye on maybe WD-40 them before you run them the truck outside through water. Um, wiring for your motor, if you run this, I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but it comes, your wiring comes out of the bottom of your, let's see, the bottom of your uh, engine case and luckily enough nothing hits that hits the engine case itself you get pretty good flex on it um, but all your wiring comes out there so I ran my battery wire and my on off switch into the firewall here along the frame rails eventually I'll zip tie that down I'm just not done I'm gonna paint the interior um, and then my steering servo I heat shrunk that as you can probably barely tell but heat shrunk that ran that along the frame and then that runs up into the firewall here and again my receiver is right there so that's going to be behind my dash I'll leave that off for now um, that'll be behind my dash probably two-sided taped up here and I run Futaba so I've got a six channel receiver um, you can see the heat shrink right there so this will get heat shrunk and stuck to my inner firewall you know behind the dashboard like that so you won't see it so as far as it's pretty smooth it's noisy um, and that could be because of how the gears mesh with one another um, I did have to open up the motor mount the two holes for the motor mount because they were very tight so I took a Dremel and I opened them this way on each side so I could swivel my motor to get proper gear mesh. Otherwise the pins, they just, it was doing that and I didn't want to do that. So the gears are all lined up with the transfer case on one half of the motor. So when you drop your motor mount with the motor attached in there, you can leave the one screw loose just like you would a regular motor mount and you can um, uh, adjust your gear lash. The, in the interior comes with a steering wheel and a column on bearings. So, and then it comes with a servo and an O-ring and another pulley. So I think that's supposed to go outside the firewall and I'm not gonna put it in if that's the case because there's no room to put the servo inside, or I'm sorry, outside of it uh, without potentially running into a issue of it um, catching a tire. Um, I, you have to order the chassis kit, then you have to order the interior kit separate, and then you have to also order your body kit separate. And what I did with my body, let me swap these two guys around here. Um, the body was a pretty simple install. Um, and what I did was I ordered the aftermarket tire carrier, um, and I have a matching at least wheel right now. Um, the, I ordered the aftermarket tire carrier or the additional tire carrier. I ordered the rear rack for the body, which was pretty cool. 
Um, this is actually off my Element Enduro uh, Night Runner. So this is probably going to be mounted on here somewhere. It just looks really cool for an Overlander rig. Um, the lights I had sitting around, these knockoff lights, I'm probably not going to run bulbs in here. I might. I don't, I don't know. I think it looks cool without them. And I don't really want to drill another hole in the roof. Uh, the roof rack was pretty cool. There's four screws that mount your little tabs to the roof rack itself. Four screws on each one with nuts, which is cool. Um, and then you get this cover to hide your screw that goes through the body itself. Now what I did when I drilled this out was instead of dremeling a big hole inside because your window is all one piece, um, I just ran my drill and I drilled all the way through in the glass. So now this glass, if it takes a hard hit or tumble, the glass won't fall out um, or drop into the interior. Um, but painting wise, it's going to be have to be removed to be painted because I don't know what color I'm going to paint it yet. Um, your rear mounts, all the little mounts that go on the back of this, all go through your body and they come with little nylon block nuts or nylocks or whatever you call them. Um, I couldn't get both of them on this bottom one, but there's both of them on the top, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, this will get a full LED light kit when I'm done with it. Um, corner markers and all that stuff, and as you can tell, because it's dirty and it's, it's banged up already, I've ran it. Um, Paint-wise, I'm probably going to go with a Toyota, OEM Toyota style color for whatever year this is supposed to be. Um, be it burgundy or silver or gray. Another thing I did was there was really long fender flare. They just stuck down and this didn't match. So you just had a fender flare hanging down. I nipped that off and then I rounded this. Um, it didn't make any sense to me as well as I think the fronts had it too. I can't remember. Um, so I cut those off and rounded those. Now it's got a running board here. I think it's coming off um, and I'll try and figure out maybe I'll have someone machine me up some standoffs from the frame to do rock sliders because I think this thing would look really cool with some rock sliders so I might even actually end up cutting this all off and the bottom rocker um, and then giving myself a little bit more clearance because on the side this catches snags bumps a lot so I want to get rid of that I drag the rear fender um, so I might be cutting off this bottom lip where it curls under um, I might just take the Dremel and, and hack that straight off I don't know yet um, nothing attaches to the rear so I mean technically I could cut it all the way off at the body line you know below the rear uh, corner markers but I would want to put something else in its place um, trail armor or something like that would be kind of cool they do make an ARB front bumper for this that I would assume you cut this right off at the body line here um, I'm going to look into that a little bit a little bit more before I decide to do that. I'm probably going to do that because I like the fact that I will have a better approach angle and a better departure angle if I can get rid of these OEM bumpers on this thing. Um, so that might be kind of nice. There's a severe corner right there, and that's going to suck during backup if you're reversing, if you get it hung up on something. This is meant to be a Class 1 truck, um, so it's not going to be anything but a drive-it-once-in-a-while truck. And as you can probably see from the background, I've got another one sitting there. Um, that one is probably going to be built on an SEX-10 II chassis because I bought the SEX-10 II mounts. These, these, are, these are meant to mount it onto an SEX-10 II chassis. So you can mount this body in a 10 II chassis. And when I mount it on an SEX-10 II chassis, um, I'm probably going to go with oversized tires. So these fender flares are going to completely come off. Rear bumper is probably going to come off up to the bottom of the tail lights maybe a little higher depending. Front bumper's coming off. That's, you know, I'm gonna make it look more like it was meant to be a, bought and built to be off-roaded. Whereas this one I want to look like, kind of like a daily driver or a um, uh, overlanding truck. The instructions don't really give you a whole lot of info. Um, it shows a snorkel that didn't come with this body or the, um, aftermarket kit you got a set of window flares that I'm probably going to two-sided tape on the body um, just because that'll look nicer if they do get yanked off I'll be able to reassemble them and they won't get broke off so I won't be left with super glued pieces of them uh, left on the body and again this is going to be driven like a class one truck so I'm not going to take it out and beat on it uh, your other baggie comes with mirrors windshield wipers for the front and the rear window 
an interior rear view mirror, uh, your headlight lenses, it looks like some corner lenses. Build wise it didn't take me very long to build and I bought a kit so I built the chassis from I don't know it took me maybe a day and with simple tools I didn't really use a whole lot of special tools to build this um, but your your instructions are kind of primitive in regard to they're not overly ex uh, explaining how things go together they're just going to kind of give you a picture they give you some little arrows to show you're going to twist a screw in my chassis came assembled um, so it came with shock towers one of the things I had to do was I didn't realize you're going to have to take this bump stop off because one of those screws is go, was what goes into your forward motor mounts um, but these came assembled so when I first put it together I had no idea so I had to kind of use my brain pull it apart and spin that screw out so once I figured it out, there's a nut on the back of it. You take that nut off, then you reuse that screw, and it goes in. It is a Phillips head. Makes it kind of interesting. So it goes, gives you a chassis assembly and gives you your motor assembly, which is funny because it'll tell you to assemble your motor and mount it in the chassis, but it doesn't tell you to put the electric motor for the truck in here during this process. It just tells you how to assemble it. It's like the last page. It tells you that. Uh, what I found that interesting. Um, it does give you some adjustability as far as these slide in the transmission so you can put it forward and backward and there are holes in your chassis pan so you can also move the motor forward and backward and I'm assuming uh, the forward motor mounts will accommodate you wanting to move it forward or, or backward a little bit as well. There's a little piece right there, nope, right there, that they don't show you to assemble onto the axle and it doesn't come assembled on the axle. You have to put all these pieces on your axle. That's the piece that goes to your rear uh, stabilizer bar. Um, other than that, your instructions, I mean, as long as you can follow pictures, it's pretty evident where things go. And then, yeah, here you go, last page. And it says, oh yeah, by the way, put that motor in there and then reassemble. Potentially fit a 550 can? I don't think so. I think you're gonna be stuck with a 540 size motor. Um, again, I use the Fusion, Hobby Wing Fusion 2300 KV. Um, it is 48 pitch. Your pinion and spur and most of your gears in your transmission are 48 pitch. So that gives you the opportunity to go with a smaller pinion if you um, get heat from running the truck. And again, it's press fit. So front and rear, there's little tabs. So it's tricky when you put the interior in. I had to put the these little tabs below this lip that hangs off your your interior here I'm gonna probably cut that off because it just makes it a pain in the butt so I'll put that on there I'll put this on there um, flex wise I would say you you might flex here's a 155 let's see how many tires we can get in here so the trucks pretty nice Get, gives you a good little amount of flex um, pretty scale build comes with Toyota diff covers on the axles um, which is nice uh, again, I went with 1.9 wheels. You could go with 1.55 wheels and probably get more of a scale look out of this. Uh, clearance wise, tires clear, uh, full lock either side. You got pretty decent steering out of this kit too. Um, your headlight and grill is pretty scale. It looks really good on this body. Um, you've even got the little windshield wiper sprayers. And there's your corner marker. Uh, as far as rear view mirrors on this, I don't know if I'm going to put them on here. I might um, put them on this one. I'm not, just not sold yet because, you, like anyone else, you know the first time you roll this, you're going to snap those right off. There overall is my review. Uh, as far as buying it, I think these are roughly in the 380-ish range. Um, if you can get them from a local hobby shop, I would suggest that because the shipping on these... The body comes separate, the interior comes separate, and the chassis comes separate. And because of the size of their boxes, if you order these from Asia Tees, you're going to spend a little bit. It's almost going to make it not worth it buying it because your. I think my shipping on my body was almost $100. Interior was $50, $60. Uh, chassis was probably closer to the $100 range-ish because of the size of the box. If you can... Uh, order it and you don't mind the shipping you want to have a really cool build a really scale truck then order away these are a phenomenal truck 
Um, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. I try to answer everybody's questions on these guys just to give you a, an exact um, idea of what you're getting into and if you buy one. Um, I also have a Facebook page, Crawler Space RC LLC, um, so you guys can check out the hobby shop and a lot of the stuff that I keep in stock for a lot of my customers around here. A lot of our guys run scale trucks, class one. Um, the competition guys are run class 2.5 primarily. Um, we do competitions in the wintertime. We do uh, series, competition series in the wintertime. We have a, a 24 scale indoor crawler course. We're located in Cutlerville just outside of Grand Rapids, so it's not too far of a trek for the guys even from like Muskegon or Kalamazoo. Um, and it's really fun. We have a bunch of guys come in. Every Wednesday we have what's called a gentleman's comp. So guys can come in and win money at the end of the night. Top three drivers walk away with coin in their pocket. Um, other than that, again, like, subscribe, subscribe, share. Um, I'm always curious to see what your guys' feedback is, uh, what kind of questions you have on builds, uh, type of stuff you'd like to see built. Um, I'm, I'm down for building a new truck of any kind. Um, SEX-10s, the axial trucks, they're usually a pretty easy build. Um, I've got a few 24 scale trucks that I've built from the Fury Tech chassis. Um, and other than that, you guys have a great afternoon, and we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.